Hey Saber fans, Tony here from Own Sabers, and today a Mando suit review for you. If you're new to the channel, I do install, repair, and review these sabers, so please like, comment, and subscribe. I also have a website where you can find my finished products and sound fonts, RonSabers.com. So if you're interested in that, link will be in the description below. So here I wanted to demo, um, if you guys have seen my Planet Comic Con review, um, I talked about the suit, I talked about um, the, the, some of the problems I had, some of the things I need to fix, and I thought I'd be uh, really cool to do a Mando suit review. Now, initially, a long time ago, when I first started the channel, I wanted to do like it in parts of me 3D printing it, of me you know painting it, of me doing all this stuff. And um, back then, I, I just wasn't as aware of, of, of you know how to do it, and, and it wasn't the best climate, and also I was like experimenting with helmets still, and how to paint, and what was the best option, and this and that. I've learned tons since then. And so, long time in the making, this is probably my Mando suit part two, ironically, but not, you know? Because this is a completely different build, completely different suit, and I'll go in depth about that. I might reference some of my old work, um, which might or might not be seen. If it's not seen in this video, you can definitely check it out, my original Mando cosplay or armor part one. And so, yeah. So, with this suit originally, um, I was working on something um, with my own character, and if you want me to talk about my own character and my lore and all that jazz, um, definitely let me know. I've been thinking about it for a while, I've done tons of research, and I wanted to tell that story, but um, I haven't really done it. In, in a short version of it, I'm a Mandalorian Jedi and one of the last of, of born on Mandalore, pure blood, you know, post-Imperial um, rule. And so, yeah. So with this Mando armor, I wanted it to be fully Beskar. I wanted it to be um, basically like a prince who uh, had his armor. Um, this is his final form, basically, that uh, was weathered and, and he's going to keep. Much like, I'm not going to say Revan or like Vizsla or, or any like other Mandalorian Jedi. Something different. Something that had been um, used. Something more like a scavenger originally, but now has his, you know, the rightful armor. And so I ended up doing something different with the weathering, and I kinda, I'll kind of i talk about that as I go. But originally these gauntlets were painted brown and silver. I wanted to be like a scavenger originally and have like asymmetric parts and, and whatnot. And I had a different helmet, which was way too big, um, which was actually on the channel for a long period of time. And I've been thinking about selling it because um, it's too big for me. And I mean, I, it's just sitting here in, in the studio. So we ended up doing something completely different because that I didn't know I could scale down. I assumed that I could just print it off and it fit, you know, which is everybody's mistake when they first start printing um, stuff. So I ended up scaling down this helmet. Um, I'm very small, so, um, which you can kind of see in the Comic Con or Planet Comic Con review, um, which is very funny. I didn't realize how small I was until I went to that con um, and those pictures. And so, anyways, so I'm very small as a Mandalorian. So I ended up um, scaling down all this armor that you see here. And it fits very, very well now. Um, it didn't prior to with other helmets that I've tried. And so the next thing was trying to figure out a finish. Now, I've done tons of research on what exactly works, trying to get this this um, finish, which is very reflective. Same thing with the helmet, very, very reflective as well. And I'm not sure how well you can see the um, detail, but there's smaller um, silver dull and slash silver um, matte uh, like markings on this, which is a very cool effect, which I achieved using, I'll tell you in a bit, so, um, so first up, what I did was I painted the parts that I already had, which was the gauntlets and the shoulder pads. The, the chest plate that I had, I wanted to redo because it was kind of small and kind of bad. And I just, it didn't, I printed it, um, flat instead of like upright. So you could see all the, the printing patterns on it. And so it wasn't terribly good. Decided to go against it. I wanted something more uniform with my Mandalorian armor. So I completely scrapped the idea of doing a scrap or, or, um, scavenger mandalorian which i probably will be doing later in um but not with the same color scheme not with the same you know idea probably something completely different much like obi-wan's um bounty hunter outfit from the clone wars i'll be doing something like ralph mccrory style so with this mandalorian armor I ended up repainting these now what i did to get achieve this this silver effect um on this these gauntlets and all this mandalorian armor was i ended up spray painting i did tons of like videos and research and people use certain spray paints and or certain like um uh, air airbrushing, yes, airbrushing te techniques, and I didn't have or any of that currently. The airbrushing, you know, paintbrush or whatnot. So I was trying to find different solutions. Now this worked very well, and I'm probably going to do it a lot more often. Um, this is what I did was I ended up spray painting a lot because um, you know you want to sand it down, you want to spray paint it, you want to do all that stuff to make it as smooth as possible. Um, and with this Mando suit or armor, it's you can still kind of see the lines sometimes if you're looking for it, but um, overall, extremely smooth, probably one of the smoothest things. Same with the helmet, um, probably one of the smoothest things I've made. And so, basically, you want to sand it down, you want to prime it, you want to put as many, like, not as many layers, but several layers enough to get it smooth. And then what you did is I put a gray 
spray paint, normal gloss gray spray paint. And then I had graphite powder and I rubbed in the graphite powder onto the armor and then uh, clear coated it. And so, and that what got this beautiful reflective um, Beskar look. And I was very, very happy. I was blown away. I was like, there's no way this is going to work the way I want to. And it worked very, very well. Um, it's very, ref it's more reflective than I'd say the spray paint that you'd use or I've used in the past trying to get that Mando silver look. And um, mainly because the graphite that sticks, it's actually, you know, metal and it reflects just like a metal if you have it on a flat surface very well. And so, yeah. Now what I did with the um, weathering and whatnot, I had two versions of spray paint. One was a fabric spray paint, which is the matte you see on these um, Mando armors and stuff. And then I used a gloss shine. Now with the gauntlets and the shoulders and the parts that I already had, I didn't have the latex that I'd use on the helmet. Now latex is what they usually use to, you know, peel off layers and stuff to get this effect that you see here. Um, which is very, very cool. But I didn't want to do that with these because I didn't want so much, you know, ripped off. And so I painted select sections and I just took like a little sandpaper and, you know, weathered it up a bit so it looked tarnished and whatnot in certain areas. And it turned out very, very well. And so I did that with the, you know, rest of the armor and then clear coated, of course, to keep whatever was weathered the way it was. Well, the helmet was a bit different. The, the helmet was the one thing that I did completely different than the rest when it came to the spray paint and stuff. I had done the same thing that you, you know, the, the clear... Um, the, sorry, the primer, the, the gloss, the gray, and then the, you know, silver. But I wanted to add, you know, the color to it. I wanted to add, you know, red somewhere to it. And I didn't want just to, the same thing with this. So I ended up doing the, you know, latex peel-off method. But what I did was I sprayed the whole helmet with the latex. So this whole thing has the, the gray, the silver, and whatnot on it. And then I spray-painted the entire black coat of plexi, or, um, oh, what was it called? Uh, Plasti Dip on it. A latex basically and I ended up then spray painting it with the fabric or paint which was the gray matte color and then I wanted my face to be you know all silver and so I ended up peeling off the entirety of this but cutting it in certain sections so you know your cheekbones are still red but then your your you know, the cheek flat parts are you know silver still and it got me a really really cool effect where um, the the gloss that was on there originally when I spray painted it um, when I pulled off the plasti dip it pulled off some of that silver clear coat as well. And so you're mixed with, you know, a matte and silver color as if it tarnished in certain areas and whatnot. And of course, I kept some of the black Plasti Dip in certain areas to look like it weathered just the paint, um, the surface area of the paint. And so I was very, very pleased with this. Now, because I sized it down, it doesn't have a lot of room in there, which is actually really nice. Um, one thing I noticed with the con, though, is that it kind of pressed against my nose, which is good because I had kind of more control that way. And so what I'll probably do is get some foam or whatnot and try to kind of press it against my cheeks instead, and so it's not so much pressure with my, my nose or whatnot. One thing I also noticed with the uh, Planet Comic Con is that no one could hear me with the helmet. So with this video coming out, I ended up buying um, a microphone or a, a voice amplifier is what they call it. And so I'll have a mic here, run through my costume, and then down to my belt, much like this um, heartbeat sensor. Now, this heartbeat sensor was something I, I thought of initially. I knew I wanted it. Um, this is Alter Ego Armory's chest plate and Alter Ego Armory's helmet. Um, this is the Grunt helmet. I bought this a long time ago, again, when I first wanted to start my Mando suit and stuff. And my idea was I was going to print off tons of helmets for each of my friends, and they're all going to have, you know, part of my Ronin Crusade, which is a Star Wars group I made a while ago. Um, which, I'm thinking about making a, a Ronin Crusade for uh, my, you know, business now, and so it's like, you know... You can join, and you guys are part of the crusade and whatnot. It's it's a work in progress, but I've been thinking about it. And so I wanted to have the vents here and, and, you know, all that jazz. And so the grunt helmet I already had. I purchased this new. I scaled this down to 88 or whatever to make sure it fit me, which did very, very well. Um, I'm I'm actually very pleased with how it is. The only thing that really kind of... with That's with any armor, but the only thing that, that really messes me up is I can't bend my arms too far, my shoulders as far as I can, you know, with that. But it came with two sections, an ab section and a um, chest section, and then a little Mando heart, which I all printed separately. And so this has uh, kind of a Boba Fett-esque to it. It has a kit siren here that I ended up uh, coating, and then it had uh, just a heartbeat. And so uh, this is actually being ran by Profi. So basically what happened is I have profis that are either broken or the amplifier fried, but the board itself is actually still good. The sound isn't that good. And so... I'll just kind of 
see if I can get this up here. So here I have a little battery case, ironically, um, and I put a singular wired battery in there and then wired it up to the profi board itself, which again, since the amplifier is blown, everything else works perfectly fine except the speaker, which for my armor, I don't need any sound and which per works perfectly. I have a single button here just so I can turn it on and off. If I turn it on, it goes to green for the heartbeat sensor. And then if I have, um, if I turn it off, which is using one button system, it'll turn off and it'll go back. And I have a 2.1 recharge port in there, and then I have some heat sink, and then a JST connector, so I can disconnect it if I want to, you know, charge it, do whatever, and then if I need to connect it again, I can just put it in there, it makes connection. Now, one thing I did that I didn't really realize is that if I bend the connector, sometimes it just doesn't make good connection, and so it kind of messes up. And so I need to remake that connection, um, and that's why it goes on and off sometimes, you know, on the angle of, of how, you know, holds itself while I'm in the suit. And so... Yeah, not a good big fan of that, but that's why it glitches now and then and turns off now and then. But I'll be fixing that and redoing that. Um, one other thing that I kind of ran into was the boots were a bit too tight. Um, when I was standing in line to get Ashley Eckstein's uh, photograph, or not photograph, um, signing done, uh, I stood there for 2.5 hours and my feet were killing me. So on top of ordering the amplifier, I ended up ordering bigger boots, a uh, bit bigger boots. The ones I had originally I bought from a thrift store, and then the ones I bought now are both for the amplifier and the boots are both from Amazon. And so, <clears throat> very, very nice. The other thing that I needed to redo was my back plate. So the back plate was one of the last things that I did, and I don't actually have it on right now um, because you guys don't really see it. And so, um, the back plate is also by Alter Ego Armory. It is a... Um, just one of the only back plates he has available actually and so I wanted something kind of different and I end up coloring it the same way that I have the Mando chest armor and stuff and uh, it just didn't want to stay the velcro didn't want to stay so the velcro adhesive on the back of my costume just didn't want to stay the rest of these were sewn on by um, the pe person that made the, the bodysuit um, and so they were beautiful they're on Etsy um, they work with you very well and so I had this custom done and so um, so yeah that back plate just didn't want to stay on and so, um, when I, as soon as I got home from the con and stuff, I ended up gluing uh, fabric glue onto the Velcro side, and so now the back plate should stay on very, very well. And so that's kind of it. The only thing I'm going to end up probably adding to this Mando suit, again, besides the stuff I already mentioned, is um, on the boots themselves, I'm going to add some like Mando armor to it. That's kind of it. And then I think I'm pretty content with how the suits turned out so far. Um, so yeah, I'll give you kind of maybe an update on the, the amplifier. If you're not already, go subscribe to my or follow my Instagram, RonanSaber00. Um, I make more posts about that and stuff there and give you kind of more details and stuff. Um, I made a post recently about my uh, Mando suit for Mando Monday. And so if this video doesn't already hap um, come out on Monday, I guess, happy Mando Monday. And so, yeah. Um, I ended up doing, uh, using this blaster as well. Um, this is a custom blaster I made, also installed with Profi. And so I did a video reviewing it and whatnot. Stun mode, blasters, Neopixel in there. And so, yeah. So, very, very nice. Um, that was, I need to, oh, that's another thing I ended up buying. I ended up buying an actual holster for that. Originally during Planet Comic Con, I ended up just having like a pocket. And I just kind of put it in there and it just kind of worked. But it sucked because it had a button over it, which kind of held the, the uh, pouch in place. So anytime I wanted to pull out my blaster, I'd risk dropping the actual uh, pocket. And so I bought a holster for that that will be coming in as well. Um, it is actually leather, and it will go very nicely. I believe it's for my right side, so I'll have to make some room here. But, yeah, very nice. That'll be one other thing that I added to the thing. Um, I also ha want to make my own custom lightsaber, mainly for cosplay. So it's very, very loud. It's very, very bright. It shows off all of Profi's you know, features and stuff. Originally, I used my SP Saber's high ground, which did beautiful. Um, I actually want to use that probably as my prim primary saber um, now. It's one of my favorite sabers um, out there currently. It's just, you know, very sturdy, steel neck, very accurate, very install friendly, and very nice to carry around. Um, especially with gloves and whatnot, it's just wonderful. And so um, at this point, I believe SP Sabers, SP Sabers also messaged me after I posted pictures about James Arnold Taylor and, um, you know, my Mando suit and wanted me to send him his, um, the pictures and stuff that I took so he could put it on his website. So if you don't see me, um, you know, on my Instagram or whatnot, if you see it on SP Sabers, um, you know, website, that's that's me in, in my full Mando suit with James Arnold Taylor and the high ground, um, which I thought was very cool for him reaching out and asking me to be on that um, website. So I'm very blessed for that as well. I'm um, very blessed to meet James Arnold Taylor in this Mando suit. So if you haven't already, go check out my Planet Comic Con review. I talk about the experiences, the heartwarming experiences I had meeting James Arnold Taylor, meeting fans, meeting um, just passionate Star Wars um, fans in general. 
Um, it was such a blast. I want to do it more often now. You know, I, I'm almost tempted to wear this in public now. Go into Walmart, you know, order, you know, food or whatever, you know, drive through full Mando suit, you know. But I'm not there yet. I'm not that confident yet. But I'm very, very pleased with how this turned out. I'm very confident with it when I wear it, I'm, even though I'm very small. Um, so, yeah, that kind of concludes it. If you have any questions, if I missed anything that you want me um, to cover in a later video or maybe an update video with when I get all the stuff in, let me know in the comments below. Um, I, again, I'm so psyched. If you want me to tell me tell you guys my you know character story, my, my um, lore, I should say, um, let me know as well. I might do a video talking about, you know, what my story is and, and what I plan to do with that story or whatnot. Um, but yeah, of course, I hope you enjoy this video. Um, I hope you enjoy my other reviews of um, Planet Comic Con. If you haven't, go check it out already. Of course, have a wonderful day and may the force be with you.